This is a Rodk Mods video. Hello, I'm Greg Rodk of Rodk Mods, and in the last video, I introduced you to my 8 core Mac Pro known as Twisted Mac. In that video, I explained to you the problem that it had with the memory controller. Well, shortly after I filmed that video, I decided to test the memory controller again. And shockingly, I have 32 gigabytes worth of RAM again. So, that's incredible. There's no telling if the problem it had before has been fixed, but so far, it hasn't had any problems running the 32 gigabytes worth of RAM. So for the time being, we will be basing everything off the current specs of 32 gigabytes worth of RAM. Okay, on to the topic of today's video. Now today's video topic is on why you should consider buying a first generation Mac Pro. I say first generation not because of 1 comma 1, but because of the case design, which a lot of people now refer to as the first generation, as opposed to the second generation, which is the trash can. So in today's video, I will be going over the pros and cons of owning a first generation Mac Pro. And there's more pros than there is cons. I will also be explaining to you on why you should consider the 1 comma 1 slash 2 comma 1 over the 3 comma 1 and newer and etc etc. Let's begin. The first generation Mac Pros had a lifespan from 2006 to 2012 with a architecture based off of consumer processors from the Core 2 series all the way through the first generation i series like the i7s. And when I say i7s I mean like the Extreme series. Anyway, these Xeon CPUs that the Mac Pro first generations have been based on have all been very good performers through their whole lifespan and still have a very long performance span to go. The only exception to this would be the 1,1 1, 1 CPUs altogether, in my opinion. They originally came with two dual-core Xeons, and in today's world, Dual core CPUs and performance in general just do not go together when it comes to editing and multitasking in heavy duty systems like a Mac Pro. So even though this series is based on the 1 comma 1, 2 comma 1, I will be talking more about the 2 comma 1s. In fact, mine, even though it started out as a 1 comma 1, I purposely upgraded it to 2 comma 1 specs because I needed dual quad core CPUs. And upgrading a 1 comma 1 to 2 comma 1 specs actually isn't that expensive today. The reason why you would want to upgrade to two quad core processors is because that even though many of today's applications can take advantage of multiple CPUs, many can't and that is included with most of today's video games where a lot of today's video games four cores is a must and two cores may work but it will not work well so before we continue one comma one macs are great mac pros for light tasks and web browsing in general otherwise they aren't great for much anything else in today's 2016 world. Then again, the 1 comma 1 would make a good server. Two dual cores is still plenty enough of power for a server. The 1 comma 1s have showed their age in 10 years, but the 2 comma 1 spec Mac Pros have actually kept up pretty nicely, and you do not have to get a 3 gigahertz set of quad core Xeons like I have and also were in the 2 comma 1, they also had a 2.66 gigahertz 
Xeon, which also is compatible in a 1, 1. So if you want to upgrade to those, it still gives you very decent performance and cost about half the price of a 3 gigahertz. Still, my 3 gigahertz processors only cost me $100. So it's still a very affordable upgrade and well worth it. Still, with all this being said, the Mac Pro 1, 1 is still the only Mac that was introduced in 2006 that is still able to run the most recent OS X, of course, with a little hacking, but it will run it. Also, the 1, 1 and 2, 1s can also fully support every feature and function in the new OS X's, unlike the other 32-bit EFI Macs that can't support everything from handoff to continuity to the graphic enhancements due to GPU requirements. The only thing you have to do to a 1, 1 slash 2, 1 is upgrade the GPU. And you can upgrade it to any GPU from the NVIDIA 8000 series and even the AMD back then known as ATI series of HD 2000s or newer. And you'll be able to have all the graphical enhancements that OS X has to offer and no bugginess. Also with continuity and handoff, the only thing you need to do is install a airport card that supports a wireless AC and Bluetooth 4.1. Though, of course, this isn't a must, and when I go over the prices of everything, I am not including my airport card, because the old airport cards will still work 100% in the new OS X. You just won't have handoff and continuity. So why should you choose to buy a first-generation Mac Pro today? Well, the number one reason is because the ease of expandability when the first generation Mac Pro came out, it was the most customizable and configurable Mac to date. And to this day, it still is. Even though the Mac Pro second generation is still very expandable and configurable, you have to expand through Thunderbolt connections. And some adapters are extremely expensive. And if you want to use regular PCIe cards, like a graphics card, for instance, you have to buy a expensive Thunderbolt card adapter, which can cost hundreds of dollars. I've seen ones going for more than $500. Also with the original Mac Pro, if you are a power user that likes to use optical drives, like I do still, this was the last Mac available where you could use standard full-sized five and a quarter inch optical drives. Also going back onto the expandability, you had room for four hard drives. It is just a breeze. It's so easy to upgrade and modify a original Mac Pro from changing RAM to changing cards to changing hard drives, to repairing it, even doing the uh, optical drives. There is no tools required except for the optical drives. You, you do need a screwdriver for those. But taking this whole system apart, for the most part, does not require any tools. I mean, if you want to tear it down to the bare pieces, you do need a screwdriver. But just to take out the RAM, or any of these cards or the hard drives doesn't require any tools. Of course, if you want to switch the hard drives out and keep the trays, you do need a screwdriver for that to switch between the two hard drives. But other than that, the trays are toolless and pull in and pop out by just re releasing that lever over there. And this system is very secure. Everything you put in it will stay in it. Thanks to this locking lever, which also can have a lock put on it, 
When that's closed, everything in this is locked down, it, with the exception of the PCIe cards. But when that closes, it sends a piece of metal locking in to each piece, even into the optical drive. You can have this side open, and no one can steal your data or your optical drives. Of course, they can steal your PCI cards and even your RAM, but the data seems to be the most important thing, in my opinion, so you won't have to worry about that. And when the case is shut, nothing can be stolen out of it. And if it's anchored down to something, they'll have to take whatever it's anchored down to with them to steal the system. So now that I've talked about why you should consider a first generation Mac Pro, why should you consider a 1, 1, 2, 1 over the newer ones like the 3, 1 and newer? The main reason is price. The 3, 1 tends to be at least twice the price of a 2, 1 and even the 1, 1. In fact, the 1, 1 is usually about half the price of a 2, 1. Still, in the end, as long as you're not afraid of hacking and playing around with your hardware, a 2 comma 1 is a very good investment. The 1 comma 1, like I said earlier, isn't in today's world, but the 2 comma 1 really is. And if you can get a 1 comma 1 really cheap like I did, you can upgrade it to 2 comma 1 specs very cheaply. Considering that the 3 comma 1 is usually twice the price of a 2 comma 1, I am going to do a quick rundown of the reasons that the 2 comma 1 is still a very good performer compared to the 3 comma 1. And so if you're in the market for a old Mac Pro to expand in and have pretty decent performance in editing and other tasks, I'll show you why the 2 comma 1 does beat out the 3 comma 1 in price to performance. The 1, 1, 2, 1 Mac Pros were based off the consumer equivalent of a Core 2 Series 6000 series, where the Mac Pro 3, 1s were more based off of the consumer version of the Core 2 Series uh, 9000 series. Now, chipset memory support aside, there really isn't a whole lot different between the two performance-wise for CPU power and processing. Here's a quick spec comparison between the 8-core 2.8 GHz 3,1 and the 8-core 3 GHz 2,1 like my system. The reason why we're comparing a 3,1 that's 200 MHz slower is because these two are the closest in comparison between the two in speed. And still, the 3,1 is actually still twice as much. All of these specs come straight from the All Max website. The 2 comma 1 in Geekbench 3 has a single core speed of 1662 where the 3 comma 1 has one of 1650 where the multi thread is 11,071 compared to 11,214. Now that's not a huge difference in performance for multi. Also the difference between the 3 comma 1 and 2 comma 1 is that the 2 comma 1 has a 1.33 gigahertz CPU bus speed where the 3 comma 1 has a 1.6. That's where the speed difference comes from. But still, the only other main difference um, between the two is the 3 comma 1 has four more megabytes worth of cache for their CPU. But other than that, and the 3 comma 1 has SSE 4.1 instruction set on it, there really isn't much of a difference. The 2 comma 1 has a 32 gigabyte max uh, support, where the 3 comma 1 has a 64 gigabyte max support. But other than that, 32 gigabytes is still plenty enough RAM in today's world. The only main RAM difference between the two is the 3,1 runs at 800 megahertz, 
where the 2 comma 1 has 667 megahertz worth of RAM speed. But when it comes to real life usage, the saying size really does matter, really does matter. Speed's not that important in RAM speed. What is important is the amount of RAM you have. So 32 gigabytes is still plenty enough for most users. The only other super huge difference between the two hardware wise is the 3 comma 1 has two PCIe 2.0 slots and two 1.1 slots where the 1 comma 1, 2 comma 1 have four 1.1 PCIe slots but even though the speeds are slower 1.1 PCIe is still plenty enough for a lot of today's cards, including graphics cards, because even though the newest graphics cards run on PCIe 3, 1.1 will not bottleneck any of today's graphics cards up to uh, the NVIDIA 900 series. All of those will run fine. The PCIe 1.1 will start to bottleneck at 8 times, but at 16 times it won't. The biggest issue is the CPUs will bottleneck, and the CPUs will bottleneck in both the 2 comma 1 and 3 comma 1 on high-end graphics cards. But when it comes to gaming and editing and stuff, PCIe speed doesn't really matter, and bottlenecking still isn't that important you can still have a very good experience. The only main difference between the two after that is just the EFI. The 1 comma 1, 2 comma 1 can't run the newest OS X only because it runs on a 32-bit EFI compared to the 3 comma 1 64-bit EFI. But in reality, that's not an issue. And in later videos, I'll show you that the 32-bit EFI is still 100% 64-bit capable. And I will show you how to run the newest OS's on it. SATA speed is the same speed. Chipset wise, that's not important. The max official OS support on a 2 comma 1 is OS X 10.7.5, which is Lion, and Windows 7 at 32-bit where the max official in the 3 comma 1 is the most recent operating system so far, which is El Capitan, and Windows 7 64-bit. But in reality, they both can support the same OSs. I'm currently running OS X 10.11.5, which is El Capitan, on this system. And I'm running Windows 10 64-bit on this system. And it's fully set up with boot camp included. The minimal speed difference between the 3 comma 1 and the 2 comma 1 isn't important. When it comes to performance per dollar, the minor speed enhancement between the 3 comma 1 and the 2 comma 1 is negligible. So when it comes down to it, it is not worth spending twice the amount of money for the 3 comma 1 over the 2 comma 1. The 2 comma 1 will work great for you if you're not afraid to play around a bit. Finally, I would like to cover what to expect price-wise when considering buying a 1 comma 1, 2 comma 1 and what I paid for this whole system setup, not including my graphics card and airport or the hard drives. This system, according to the serial number, was made in December of 2006. It came with 2.66 gigahertz dual cores in it. I upgraded it to two 3 gigahertz processors for $100. This system, when I bought it, was $139 with shipping. I bought a GT120 from Mac Bid Cards for $64, and the RAM all 32 gigabytes cost me $40. And if you aren't interested in getting 32 yet, 16 is still plenty enough and you can buy half this kit set for $20 on eBay. It's a great deal. Altogether, 
in everything I've talked to you about. This whole system, minus of course the video cards and the hard drives, only cost me $303 for the GT120 graphics card, the 32 gigabytes worth of RAM, and the two quad-core 3 gigahertz processors. So to wrap it up, $303 for a powerful system like this isn't bad. The biggest drawbacks are it's big, it's bulky, and weighs like around 42 or 45 pounds. It also consumes a lot of energy, but it can be a great server. It has plenty of room and expandability for server drives. You can turn it into a server. You can turn it into a pretty good workstation, a pretty great editor, and it's just a great system overall. And to compare it to today's Macs, this has almost the same power and performance of a i5 MacBook Pro or even an i5 Mac Mini. So it's still a very good system and instead of paying over $1,500 for a MacBook Pro or even let's say $600 for a Mac Mini, you can have all this expandability for $300. It's just worth it. Well, that concludes my video for today. In the next video, we will be covering the first parts of me transferring to my new hard drive, and I will be showing you tips and tricks and many other things on how to put a, an operating system, and I'll show you multiple ways to be able to do that so you can pick your own way. This has been a Rutkin Mods video.